So we're going to find the sales tax and the total cost of a machine that costs $71.95 with sales tax of 5%. So for A, we're going to go looking for the sales tax. So what we have is our percentage is 5 out of 100. And that's relating to where $71.95 is the whole price. And we're going to get our tax here. So T is going to be equal to 5 times $71.95 dollars over 100. So we divided by the 100 here. 5 times 71.95 equals, and divide by 100, and we're going to round this to the nearest penny. It's $3.59.7. Cents. So that's going to be $3.60. That's your tax. And B, you're going to add $71.95 plus $3.60. And take it up to $75.55. Find to the nearest tenth of a percent, find the percent price reduction of an MP3 player from $119 to $109.99. $119.99 to $109.99. So, the absolute change is the first thing we find. And the change is new at $109.99 minus the old of $119.99. We find that it's a loss of $10 on the price, so it dropped. But they asked how much the reduction was, so we're going to say $10 reduction, and they want that as a percentage relative change as a percent. We're going to put our $10 up top and we're going to divide by the old price. Divide by what you had already established which was 119.99. The dollar signs cancel. We do get a negative change. Oh, we're going to multiply this by 100% to get it as a percent rather than a decimal. That sign will stick around in our answer for what we're working with here. So we have 10 divided by 119.99 equals. So we've got 8.33%. We've asked us to go to one decimal place, and if so, that'd be 8.3%. The drop was 8.3%, and that'll be our answer for that. Check it against what we've got on here. We get our answer here. What if you did it wrong? What's the most common wrong answer? In case I can help you with this, would be if you divided it by the 109.99, you're not going to get 8.3%. If you take your 10 and you divide it by 109.99, you're going to get about 9.1%. So if you got 9.1%, you suffered through the most common problem that people have with this, which is to divide by the wrong number. You don't necessarily divide by the bigger or smaller number, you divide by the old or original number. In this case, we had to divide by our old original number of 119.99. Find the total interest for $11,000 at 8% simple interest over three years. So for simple interest, our interest equals principal times rate times time. We don't have to worry about the periodic rate and all that because simple interest doesn't matter how frequently it's paid, it's going to apply the APR. So in this case, we've got $11,000 with the dollar sign, 8% is 8 divided by 100, and it's going to be multiplied by 3 years. So let's go through. We've got 11,000 times 8 divide by 100, and then times 3. $2,640 is our simple interest. And these should be matching the answers that we're getting on our answer key on the back of this sheet that I handed out through email. Find the time of simple interest account that earns 7.5% is your APR. 800,000 is what you started with, and you wind up with interest of 540,000. So we do have this I equals PRT. They want us to find the time. 
So we're going to divide each side by P as well as R, by P as well as R. Going to go on T equals I over P times R. So our interest is $540,000. And on the bottom, we've got $800,000 to be multiplied by our interest rate, which is 7.5 divided by 100. So let's figure out what the denominator is to go under our 540,000, which also has its dollar sign here. And we've got our 800,000 times 7.5 and divided by 100. Now we've got 60,000. The dollar signs cancel. And when this is all done, you have nine years. As you get ready to take this exam, here's something that I give out every semester to my students during the practice time that they're practicing for the exam. If they show up, they get it. If they watch their email, they'll get it. And I always offer this that if you were to show up for this exam without a note card, I would allow you to use this sheet. Because if someone shows up without a note card, they're gonna be in pretty bad shape. And I don't want them to be penalized on this one. In other ones, you show up without a note card, you might be fine, or you're making that terrible choice to try and go without a net. But here I always provide the net. What would happen is you would have to decide, do you want this sheet from me, which is a clean sheet, or do you wanna use the note card that you brought in? And if you don't like your note card, you can say, give me the sheet but I don't have any personalized notes for you on this. This is only the formula sheet that I think contains a lot of the stuff that you would need. Most people use this to develop their note card and just use their note card, and that's the standard rules for in-class exams. We're in this weird spot in the spring of 2020 where I'm going to allow you to use this as well as your note card. So, you know, in fact, I've decided and let you know that I'm not gonna consider it cheating if you use your notebook, but you're gonna be thumbing through there as the clock is ticking down and you may not finish if you don't work hard enough to prepare your note card. But this sheet is a good thing to look at to get your formulas right, because I don't insist on you memorizing the formulas or even pretending that you would in my regular class. So let's go ahead with this. This is a simple interest rate. Uh, $2,500 is deposited. $900 interest is earned over eight years. They want me to find the APR. Well, of course, interest equals P times R times T. And in this case, they want me to find the interest rate. So we're going to divide by P and T. R equals interest over P times T. So let's see what this is gonna have us filling in. The interest that we earned is $900. The principal that went in was $2,500. They both have dollar signs, and that's going to be multiplied by eight years. So we're going to have $900 over, in this case, $20,000. Dollar sign. And we knock out the zeros, it's 9 over 200, or about 4.5 over 100. But what would that be if we wrote it out as a decimal? We took the 900, just divided by 20,000, and let's see what it makes for a decimal. 900 divided by 20, 1, 2, 3 for 1,000. Look at it, 0 0.045. So that's saying that R equals 0 0.045, that is the decimal interest rate. Which means that we've actually got this R, which is gonna go over 100, equals 0 0.045, and we multiply both sides by 100, this will become R, and that'll become 4.5%. 0 0.045, if I ask you for the APR, the annual percentage interest rate, and you give me 0 0.045, then you're telling me that it's 0.045 over 100. 
and that's way too small. The APR as a percent is 4.5%. You may know 0.045 as a decimal is the same as 4.5 over 100, but this is what we have. Our interest rate goes over 100 to generate 0.045, multiply both sides by 100 straight up R, and that becomes a bigger looking use of the four and the five, 4.5%. Find the principal that, are, that earns $390 over five years at 10% APR. This is simple interest. Again, it didn't say compounded anywhere, making it be simple interest. So interest equals principal times rate times time. We'll divide each side by RT. Knock these out, knock these out. Principal equals I over R times T. It earns $390 interest, and down here we've got R, our interest rate is 10, divided by 100, and then it's over five years, so we got that. This is $390, and this is 50 over 100, so that's 0.5. If we double both, we'll see that it's $780. But if you just go ahead and take your 390 divided by 0.5 will get you to the $780. Now we get into something that mentions compounding. But it doesn't mention multiple deposits, which is how I know when I go through this list of options. This is involving compound interest, but it is not involving an annuity. And so the formula that I'll be needing to use is, in this case, A equals the principal times factor for each period of interest to the power n. Find the future value of $895. So we're starting with $895. The dollar sign does come in on that. 4% APR. So R is equal to 4 divided by 100. Compounded annually tells me that it's going to be divided by 1. So you don't really have to do this Dividing by one, it doesn't change it, but it's 0.04. And n is nine years, so we begin with nine, and it's once a year, so you don't really have to do the times one to get that nine. And therefore, your account balance will be the original $895 times one plus 0.04. That's going to go straight to 1.04 raised to the power nine. Compound interest, but not an annuity. It's a single payment of eight ninety five going in. Eight ninety five times one point oh four to the power of nine. So I knew it was compound interest, and I did not have reason to believe it was an annuity. So I use this, and I get nine seventy eight point eight four eight, and I'll call that nine seventy eight. 0.85. It's a compound interest problem. I decided to do this one just slightly different, number seven, than the one that I had given you on yours. I went with $895 to get a different number so that you then get a chance to do your first application of compound interest applying something a little bit different. Can you see what's different in it? So you're not going to see this answer on your answer key because I had a different value in there somehow. Okay, here's the Burtons. Need to pay for college for their daughter. They decide they want to have this money ready 15 years from now. So it says the Burtons set up a plan to pay $90,000 for college. They'll need the money in 15 years. Their bond fund pays 6.5% APR, compounded monthly. How much should they put in the fund now? Not how much should they put in periodically or you know every month or something like that. Right now, it's all going in. This is compounded but it's one big payment going in. That's gonna to lead to us using the account balance is equal to the principal you put in times one plus R to the power of N. They wanna know how much they're gonna put in as principal, so what we're gonna to have to do here is divide by one plus R to the N. So you need to be able to do that, and then we can see that we'll be able to cancel out the one plus R to the N's on there, and P is equal to the account balance divided by one plus R factor to the power N. Okay, the amount they need is 90,000. So 
the dollar sign. The R that they have is 6.5, divide by 100 for percent, and it's monthly, so divide by 12. And they're going to put this in for 15 years. So that's going to be 15 years, and interest is going to happen 12 times a year. So 15 times 12 gets you 180. So their principal they need to put in now is going to be the 90,000 on top. And then we're going to go with 1 plus 6.5, divide by 100, and divide by 12. All that's going to get me my factor for multiplying each time that interest is applied. And this was 180. So this is a one time they're putting the money in. Now they're going to go back and get a lot more money than they put in when they go pick up the 90,000. How much, which is less than the 90,000, are they putting in now? We'll go with 90. One, two, three zeros for 1,000. Divide by parentheses. One plus 6.5. Divide by 100 and divide by 12. When I close the parentheses, this calculator is going to show me 1.00541666667. But I have the calculator doing all that. I still need to power it up to 180. So I'm going to hit the power key, take it up to 180, and hit equals. And here's what it comes out with. $34,036.50. And then for the decimal goes 0.749. So I need to put in 34,036.75. What happened on that problem was you knew that they were saving for down the road. They're putting money in once because it's not an annuity with multiple payments. And what happens is they put in $34,036.75 now. They let it sit in that account and they go back at the end of this 15 years and they pick up the 90,000. That is compound interest. That's looking for how much did they put in. And they put in less than the 90000 they went to pick up. If you look on this formula, it says compound one-time deposit. The only formula I gave you was A equals P times 1 plus RVN. I think you should be able to divide that both sides in order to isolate the variable that you need. Or put all your numbers in and then go ahead and isolate what their principal or their one-time payment is going to be. Find the periodic payment needed in this annuity. So I saw a periodic payment, which means multiple payments are going in over a certain period, we're going to keep making payments, needed to go into this annuity. So I see it's going to be an annuity. This is putting money in multiple times, and this is an annuity problem. And now what they tell us, let's find the value to the nearest cent. If the future value is going to be 28500 we're going to go at 5.9% APR. It's compounded monthly over nine years. We've got knowledge of what the future value is, we want to find the periodic payment into this. So we're looking at what the payment needs to be. Ongoing deposits, this is an annuity. And therefore, we need our payment to be AR over 1 plus R, that pair of parentheses to the end, and then minus 1. Might even have this in square brackets. And let's see what they've got. They've got A equals 28,500. That's the future value. That's the account balance of the annuity in the future. R, 5.9, divide by 100, compound monthly, so divide by 12. N, 5 years, or 12 times a year, so times 12 gets you 60 payments going in. P equals A of uh, 28,500 times 1 plus, oh, just going to be, sorry, that value, 5.9, 1 plus is coming. Divide by 100 for percent and divide by 12. And then here we're going to have square brackets around 1 plus 5.9. Divide by 100, divide by 12. Close the parentheses, raise it up to the power, 
which is 60 payments. Down here is a minus one in those square brackets. So up top, we have 28,500 times 5.9, divide by 100, and divide by 12. Not too bad. Got the dollar sign on it. Presently, 140.125. Over. Now we got to go find out what those are going to make in the denominator. So we have a pair of parentheses that begins with a 1 plus 5.9 divide by 100 and divide by 12. We'll close the parentheses. I'm looking at the factor of 1.00491666667. So I've gotten the parentheses closed. I'm going to raise that up to the power of a positive 60. And then from that amount, I'm going to subtract 1. My denominator comes out with approximately 0.342, 155, 844. And that's sitting on my calculator, so I want that in my denominator. I'm going to take 140.125 and divide by that. Four oh nine five three five four oh nine dollars point five thirty five cents. So I'm gonna go four oh nine point five four. That didn't involve compound interest. It actually was an annuity, so it's gonna be payments going in to eventually get to a total of twenty eight thousand five hundred. Some from my payments, some from interest as it sits in the account, period after period. But I didn't have to look for the word annuity. A lot of people that aren't really sure what's going on, they just look for the word annuity and say, annuity, let me use an annuity formula. You still might be stuck. But this concept of a periodic payment trying to hit a goal will be an annuity. And it's asking you for the payment. So you're going to use the formula where you go ahead and find the payment when you know the account value, the rate, and how much time you're going to have for the number of periods. A business buys an annuity to buy copiers in eight years. The payment is... $3,650 quarterly at 7% APR. Find the future value of the annuity, which they'll use then to buy copiers. Okay. So we're looking at an annuity because they're putting in multiple payments for some future money. And we do know that they're putting in $3,650 for each payment. So that's their payment going in we're trying to see where this money is going to go. So this is an annuity problem. We want to see how much the account balance is going to be. So we want to find A using P times 1 plus R to the N, then minus 1 before we close the square brackets. And that all goes over R. So we need a P, an R, and an N. P, payment, their own money, 36.50 each time. R, interest rate, quarterly, four times a year. R is 7%, divide by 100, and divided by four for four times a year. That'll work out, because when we do seven, divide by 100, we get 0 0.07, and then we can divide that by four. It comes out to 0 0.0175. It's kind of a break, it means the parentheses will be easier to deal with. And N. Eight years, but not just once a year, four times a year. So four times, times four, 32. Okay, the account balance will be, we'll take $3,650, and in here, we'll get something from them, and we'll see what that number turns out to be. Let's see what we get here. 1 plus R is 1.0175, 1 1.0175, 1 powered up 
to the number of periods, 32. Okay, so we've got 1.742213492, but that's already sitting there when I now subtract one off of it. And this looks like in the parentheses that hold the square brackets that I had, 7422213492. And so I can go ahead and multiply that out. The denominator, good news, is just what R needs to be 0 0.00 or 0 0.0175 right there. So I'm going to multiply this by the 3650. Gets me approximately 2709.079246 over 0 0.0175. So take that number, divide by 0 0.0175. No, this is the negative. Negative 154804. $154,804.53. So that's the value that their money is going to get up to being. 11 has a two-parter. A lot of times people have trouble with this one because of part B. Really doing part A, and you're thinking as you do part B, and you're going to do some subtraction. The owner of a cafe needs to buy a new location in seven years. She buys an annuity that pays 13.5% interest compounded annually, so that's n equals one, lowercase n equals one. Find the payment. Uh, if the payment is $7,000 per year, find the future value. So this is an annuity problem. I wanna see what it's worth. So that's gonna be where we need to put in the payments. That's for $7,000. And here, we're gonna go one plus r the power n, then subtract 1 in the square brackets and put the whole thing over r. So very similar to what we just did in 10. So here we have 7,000. 1 plus r. Let's find out. Oh, let's, let me get that set up here. a is 7,000. r is equal to 13.5. Divide by 100, and it's compounded kind of anyway, so we just have 0.135. Divide by 1 if you want. So we're going to have the square brackets with 1.135 in there, raised to the power of capital N. Seven years, once a year, seven times one, seven years, seven, once a year. Seven up here. Minus one, close it. That whole thing is going to go over the 0.135 value of the periodic interest rate. So, I'm going to do 1.135, power it up to 7, subtract 1 from that value, and I'm going to multiply by $7,000. Two, three zeros. That was weird, it came out with a negative value. Let's try that again. 1.135 powered to seven equals minus one equals 1.426448235 times 7,000. One, two, three zeros. Okay, now I have. Ninety-nine eighty-five point one three seven six four six, and that is going to be divided by 0.135. And I have that on my calculator. The numerator's there on my calculator already. I'm going to divide by 0.135 and get for me seventy-three nine sixty-three. with 
decimal followed by 982. So, 73,963.98 will function. What that's going to be. Now the other one requires a little bit of thought, so some people don't like this one. They're like, wait, you didn't show us exactly how to do that. Well, if you're watching this video, actually I am. But how much more interest would be earned? That means let's do some subtraction between two numbers, one of which is going to be that 73,963.98 cents. What's the other one? The total of her deposits for six years are put in all at once with the same terms, which means the interest rate is going to be the same and it's going to be compounded annually. So. This one, what we have is her account balance is what we're looking for. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, let's see. That was crazy of me right here. I need to put a P right there. Purple. Her principal or her payments were going to be seven thousand. Here's what we've got. Her payments are seven thousand, and she makes seven of them. So her principal is seven thousand dollars seven different times gets her $49,000. That's where a lot of people get lost. What do you mean? How much did she put in? She put in $7,000 seven times. She put in $49,000. R is the same. Okay, 13.5 divided by 100 gets you 0.135. And six years, once a year, we're not dividing this by one and multiplying that by one, n is six. If you want to multiply by one, you can, but it's six. Not seven, but six years. This is a case where somehow she managed to get all $49,000 together at the end of the first year and then goes with it in, leaves it, and takes off. Somehow she got all that money in that short amount of time and then she never had to go back to the bank and put in those little bits each year, even though 7,000 is not that tiny amount. So this is where we get our account balance is going to be equal to P times 1 plus R to the power N. So it's going to be some $49,000 going in. And we're going to go with 1.135 and we're going to power it up to 6. It's going to lead us right in to a value. We've got to just round to the nearest penny after we take 49, 1, 2, 3 zeros times 1.135 powered up to 6 and hit equals. This one, 104, comma, 754.152, so we'll call it 0.15. Now, the answer to part B is not that amount. It didn't say, do this other one and get me a number. It said, find the difference between this number and that number. So we're going to come here. We're going to subtract the 73,963.98. So, I'm going to subtract 73. 963.98 equals 30790.17. And it's over $30,000 more made by taking that second option if it's available. Hey, Peggy Marine wants to have $170,000 to spend in 11 years. At 7.5% APR, what monthly payment must they make? It's monthly into an annuity. You might see that at the end. It says it's an annuity, but because it's a monthly payment and they're saving for the future, this is an annuity, and they want to see how much money they're going to have. So we're going with our annuity equation, and we want to find the account balance. So we want to find the account balance for their annuity, which will be P times 1 plus R, all to the power n, then minus 1, and that goes over r. That means we need a $170,000. That's what they're going to get to. Uh, I 
Yes, I know that's silly again with the P. You need their. Oh, wait a minute. That's silly. That's true. This is an annuity, but they know that they are not putting $170,000 in every month. If they have that much money, they just do it now. So this isn't the right formula for it. It is an annuity. We divide both sides in such a way to isolate the payment. Now, we don't have to do that division. We're going to go with the annuity payment concept where the payment is equal to a times r over the square bracket of 1 plus r to the n and then minus 1. Ah, all right, now we're ready for a. Yes, 170,000. R is up next, what we need. 7.5% divide by 100. It's a monthly payment, so we're going to divide by 12. How many years? 11 years. But they're going to pay 12 times a year for 132. So, we're going to find their payment is going to be $170,000. We can find that interest rate, good news, 7.5, divide by 100, and divide by 12, 0 0.00625, 0 0.00625, all right, and this is going to be in the parentheses, we're going to have 1.00625 raised to the power of 132, 132, and then subtract 1. Numerator. 170, and then 1, 2, 3 zeros for 1,000, times 0 0.00625 equals 1062.5. One point double oh six two five raised to the power one hundred thirty two subtract one off it gets me my denominator looking like one point two seven six oh two nine seven oh four. So we want to take the terminating 1062.5 divide by that decimal that we've got a good approximation of it. I'm going to put 832.66 away every month for 11 years. They'll go back and they'll pick up what they need, $170,000 for that future spending. Now, here's something similar, but not exactly the same. This is... They want to pay for machines seven years from now, and they have $25,000 to put in right now at 8.5%. So they have all the money now. They're not going to keep making trips into the bank. This is compounded. And uh, they didn't say, but this is, I guess we need to see how frequently it's compounded. Mm -hmm. 13, as it will appear for you when you see it. Compounded quarterly. There we go, squeeze it in. Okay, compounded quarterly. Now we're after it. They want to know what's this going to be worth. We take our principal and we multiply it by 1.r, 1 point 1, one plus r, raised up to the power n. We don't know what a is going to be, but the 
starting principal, our own money, $25,000, a one-time drop-off. Interest rate, 8.5. Divide by 100 and dividing by 4, that will terminate. N is 4 times a year, 7 years times 4 for 28. Payments. Let's see what happens here. 8.5. Divide by 100 and divide by 4 equals 0 0.02125. 0 0.02125. Here we have it then. A is equal to, put in there 25,000. Multiply by 1.02125. And power that up to 28. Periods. There's a one time deposit getting us there. 25, 1, 2, 3, 000, times 1.02125. We will power that up to 28 equals approximately 45044. Point one zero four forty five oh forty four point one oh and now we begin our loans questions. This is the first time we're borrowing money in this review. Number fourteen. Home sells for $298,000 with a 20% down payment. Find the monthly payment. So we've got to figure out 20% of 298000 to find the down payment. So the down payment equals, it's going to be 298000 times the 20. and divide by 100, diagonally, dividing by 100. Okay, so we got 298, 1, 2, 3, times 20, and divide by 100. We got $59,600 down payment. So what we're gonna borrow for principal is gonna be the original 298,000 Minus 59,600. Okay. Now we're borrowing money, so our payment is equal to P times R over 1 minus 1 plus r to the power of negative n. p is equal to $238,400. r is equal to, it's a monthly payment, monthly right there, 5.7. Seven, divide by 100 and divide by 12. Point double O, 475. And N. It's monthly, but they're doing 27 years, 12 times a month, 27 times 12. Three hundred twenty-four. Get their payment. P is two hundred thirty-eight thousand four hundred. R is fortunately 0 .00475. four seven five, and then 
the bottom. We'll go with 1 minus 1.00475 powered to the negative of 324. So you do what's necessary to get a negative power into your calculator. And let's figure out what the bottom is. That this is 0.78462 1085. That's my denominator. Okay. So I'm going to determine what the numerator is. Two thirty eight four hundred times point double oh four seventy five eleven thirty two point four I'm going to divide that by the point seven eight four six two one oh eight five give it all I can and it comes out of here as 1443 1443.244 43 and 24 cents per month. Another payment uh, buying this store is going to pay over 29 years. $784,000 is the cost of the store, but you're managing to put 7% of the money down as a down payment. You want to find the monthly payment if your interest rate is 5.4% APR over 29 years. So we've got our 7%, 7 over 100, equals some down payment over 784, triple zero. It's going to lead me to having a down payment of 7 times 784, triple zero, dollars over 100. $54,880. So the amount that you're borrowing is going to be the original seven eighty four one two three thousand minus fifty four eight eighty. Seven twenty nine and one hundred and twenty. Okay. So your PMT equals P times R over one minus one plus R to the negative n. And your P is equal to seven twenty nine. R is equal to 5.4. Divide by 100 for percent and divide by 12 for monthly. Let's get that down. 5.4. Divide by 100 and divide by 12. 0. 0.0045. 0. 0.0045. Monthly for 29 years, 29 times 12. Three hundred forty-eight. So seven hundred and twenty-nine thousand one hundred twenty times point double O 
45. Hey, they both terminated, so let's multiply that out. 729, 120 times 0.0045. 328, 1.04 over 1 minus. That's negative. Denominator. 0 0.790. 3281.04 by that. Four. Four one five one point one eight seven. Four one five one point one nine. Four thousand one hundred fifty one dollars and nineteen cents. Building costs 528,000, 6% down payment. Very similar type problem. This is a 20 year loan. So we've got 6%. It's going to be 6 over 100. Equals the down payment over 528,000. E equals 528,000 times 6. $1,680. So the principal that's going to be borrowed is the $528,000 minus the $31,680. Six three twenty. Now this payment is going to be P times R over one minus one plus R to the power of negative n. We got P R equals five point five five. Divide by one hundred, and luckily when we divide by twelve, it terminates. divide by 100 divide by 12 equals 0 0.004625 0 0.004625 and n is 20 years monthly 20 times 12 240 payments so we're going to have 496320 0.004625. Oh, figure out what that number is. We have B. Six three two zero equals twenty two ninety five and forty eight cents. Oh, we're gonna go figure out the denominator. Is 0 0.004625. So we go 1 minus 1.004625 powered to the negative 25. 240 negative 
equals a denominator of 0 0.6695. 6959 equals approximately 3428.153 monthly payment of $3428.15 okay we're going to do an amortization here of 3 months we have determined in advance that the monthly payment is going to be $1,529.29 per month, every single month. We're going to start at $317,280. That is the amount of the mortgage after all the adjustments for down payment and closing costs. That's what we're starting with. So we're going to find the interest each month, see how much is left after interest is taken out of the check we sent in, knock that off the balance and have it drop, do it for three months. The interest rate is 5% and it's monthly. So 5% annually, divide by 100% and divide by 12 because it's monthly. And let's get started. The first multiplication we do is 317,280. And we're gonna multiply it by R. Multiply it by five, divide by 100, and divide by 12. Got it. 1322. So this multiplies by that, winds up here. The principal payment is going to be, each time we're gonna start with 15, 29, 29. 15, 29, 29. 15, 29, 29. And we're gonna subtract 13, 22. And this month, it's 207 and 29 cents. And I want to take this minus that. So now I'm looking at 317072. 0.71. by the interest rate. So times 5, divide by 100 per percent, and divide by 12 because it's monthly. 1321 and 14 cents. So now that 1321 and 14 cents is going to come off here. Twenty nine twenty nine back to the standard payment two eight fifteen. I want to take this minus the two eight fifteen three one seven zero seven two point seven one came out three one six. 864.56 times the interest rate. So with that still on my calculator, I'll go ahead and times by 5, divide by 100, and divide by 12. Equals 13.20 and 27 cents. Subtract that from fifteen twenty nine point twenty nine two oh nine oh two and that looks like it's barely moving, but what's going to happen over forty years 
The last one is going to have almost every penny of the 15, 29, 29 showing up in this column, and almost nothing in terms of interest. 316, 864.56 equals. Three sixteen six fifty five point fifty four. What I would do if I was grading this paper is the first thing I would look at is see that they all align to the right thing and did I get the right one where I'm reading off my paper three one six six five five point five four. That lines up with what you got there. All nine are correct, full credit. So I want to show you eighteen, which is the same thing. I want to show it to you in a slightly different way. So you're going to be looking over my shoulder for this. trying something new this year since everyone will be taking their exam outside of the classroom. The clock will be running once you start the exam, but if you want to use Excel to complete the problem or problems that deal with this, I will allow you to do that. Anything on the exam, if you're finding Excel to be helpful for it, that'll be a tool available to you in the outside world. So now that we're not all sitting at desks in the classroom, I'll allow that as feasible, something to have you using on your exam. And for that reason, I'm going to do the next one. This is number 18 on our exam right here in Excel. So I've set it up where I've got the payment number, an interest column, a principal payment column, and a balance column. And one other thing that I think I'd like to show is the payment that we have here. And the payment that we have in this one is set at $919.83. 919 and 18 cents. Okay. Well, that's kind of crazy, so why don't I make it look the same stylistically as these? Okay, so that's my payment every month. It's always going to be right there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off. I'm going to put in a 1 here. It was already there, but I'll put it again. Interest is going to be equal to what the previous month ended as times. Now, our interest rate on this is set at 7%. So we'll go times 7, divide by 100 for percent, and it's monthly, so we'll divide by 12, and we'll get that. And now the principal payment is going to be equal to this exact value right here, minus what I had in interest. So that'll get me a dollar value. But what I want to make sure is every time that I go to look for what am I going to use for my monthly payment, I always want to go back to this spot where it's E2. Now, rather than say, oh, you should all be experts in Excel, I always want to go back to E2. So when I'm looking at this and I see in its formula bar that it's got E2, I'm going to put a dollar sign on the E and a dollar sign on the 2, and that's going to make it always go back exactly to E2. It's not going to chase me around this spreadsheet. It's going to keep going back to E2. It turns out that my reference to column E isn't trying to change, but I definitely got to make sure it keeps going back to column 2, I'm uh, sorry, to row 2 to find that 919.18. Over here, what I want to do is have this equal my balance from the month before minus the principal payment, and now I've got that. Now I'm going to make these guys all look a little bit better, so I'm going to get them all to be centered in their column. Well, at least they should be. Uh, they're refusing. No, they're good. Okay, they took it out. Now, what this one is equal to the row above number plus one more. That's going to make it two, three, four as I go down. This one is going to be exactly the same kind of stuff as the one above it. But what happens here is when I look at it, it goes to D3, it goes to the third row grabs that number, multiplies by 7, divide by 100 for percent, divide by 12. So that's great for finding the interest it's based on the month that ended just before us. The principal payment. I want to bring this thing down. I want it to be always going back to the $919.18, and I want it to subtract the number that's just to the left of where I am. And then this one. I want to bring down like that. So now I want to see how it looks for me to do this for our third row and oh, control Z, put that back. I got to grab this corner and fill that down. 
and let's read across the answers. Let's look at the bottom right. Bottom right corner, 137,979.13. Huh, they did not match. What's the story here? Um, 206.87, yeah. 286.21. To uh, 80, no, 806 21 and 805 54. Off by penny? Hmm, don't know about that one. Uh, principal paid 1296. So let me see. 1918, 19, did I type that in right? I'm doing the typing, and that's an important part of what you got. You got to get that right. 1919, 83. Okay. I only made one mistake in typing here. If this was 83, it'd be great. Put in is 83. Let's take another look now. Because I'm referring to that cell every single time for my amount of my mortgage payment, I fixed it in that one place and it made everything get corrected up to what we need. Let's see how the last value looks. I'll read it off my paper. 137 comma 979.13. Perfect fit. Okay, one more thing I have the opportunity to do for you here, and that is show you that this is real. Because you could do that, fill in those six those values on your exam and get the 100% correct. So if you choose to use Excel, you're welcome to do that as well. And you can look at the prior to this where we looked at problem 17. But I want to take this thing and I want to try and bring it all the way down to 360. Get it jumping. Uh, we got a lot of months to cover here because we're doing 30 years. Is it 30 years? Uh, let's take a look while it's scrolling through there. Uh, yeah, 30 years. So we got to get just to 360, approximately 360. I think the first one is words, second one is row, is a blank row, and the third one. So we might need like 362. But the nice thing is it's got that counter sitting in front too. I'll let it go. Okay. What we see is row 360, we only pay $8.28 of interest, $911.55. And at the end, we owe 50801. Let's see. What happens if we do one more row? Whoop, did that wrong again. Control Z. If we grab that corner, drop it down. Okay, so I don't know that I love their value. Uh, let's see. 91983. Did I start it right? Uh, 138320. 138.20704. So I don't know that thing's gonna hit it just right. If we look all the way down here at 360, I mean the amortization was correct for what I asked you to do with the numbers they gave you so you'd get full credit for it. But it looks to me like over 361 payments or over 360 payments, uh, they missed by $508. That's almost $1.50 a month. So I'm going to go up and pay an extra $1.50 a month. And you don't have to know specifically why I'm doing that. But I think this should be uh, $9.21.33. This is going to be a lot closer to being what it should be. Looks like they were short by $1.50. And they owed $500 or so on that last month when it was over. It's a little dark. Well, I guess I got a little too aggressive at the $1.50. Um, Try nine hundred and twenty dollars. And what happens is you can just keep trying these numbers till you get the one that hits the right amount. But nine twenty, pretty close. Uh, we owe three hundred dollars at the last month, so maybe not even a dollar difference. Nine twenty and twenty five cents. But this shows the power of a well written spreadsheet in that. All the numbers can chase that around and you'll say, you know, what number should I really be paying? Yeah, we're within $4.38. I think over 360 payments, maybe I paid a penny too much. Something in that range. I'll go here, make it full. And it just chases them all. And this used to take weeks for someone to do this all over again from scratch. But there you're within $7.82. Um, so that's how it goes. You're welcome to use the spreadsheet. Uh, you can use the spreadsheet to figure out, you know, you've got to design your own spreadsheet to do it. You're not supposed to be using a spreadsheet that I've typed up, but 
If you create a spreadsheet that meaningfully gets this done, you can use that as a resource on your exam. It shows knowledge and work on your part as well. Good luck.